Okay, we're going to try and live stream one of our students in, so just hold on a second. All right, he, he's got a, he's coming. His name is uh, Adonis, and I want, I want everyone to get ready to say hello. Everyone say, hey, Adonis. Hey, Adonis. Hey, Adonis. Oh, it must be frozen. All right, well, Adonis is not live streaming. He is real. He was a senior with us who was very close to dropping out. Um, and he got into one of our web development courses after school. He's now a freshman studying computer science. Providence After School Alliance, we're just learning how to recognize skills. We're better at managing quality tools and assessments that we know make a difference uh, for student outcomes, like real-time attendance, uh, professional development. So when we found open badges, we knew we had a connection that could recognize the unique experiences our kids have outside of school. Open badges make it easy to earn, issue, and share badges across the web and really work well for learners of all ages. So our program and our badge might recognize that the kids are learning uh, dance, but also uh, that their instructor was trained uh, using some uh, professional development tools and there's individual uh, attendance for them. Open badges work really well for learners beyond the school year because it enables them to take the badges that recognize skills, literacies, and interests they have with them on the social web and make them manageable. Open badges do a fantastic job of being able to track contributions and participation, as Damian mentioned, also while fostering long-term learning and really creating a sense of community cohesion among groups of learners. A range of badge issuers, many of whom you will meet at the conference, use their existing content and criteria to create open badges that are then accessible to their community members, what we call badge earners. Badge earners push those badges or send them to their open badges backpack, which is a digital badge repository. And from there, they can share those badges on places that really matter to them, places like their WordPress blogs, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, all with the purpose of enhancing their own professional and personal learning opportunities. Now it's important to note that these aren't just digital badges. We think of digital badges as image-based files. In fact, open badges are really information rich in that they include metadata that, is, that makes it possible for the person who is observing one of the PASA learner's badges to see things like where that badge was issued, uh, the criteria behind that badge, um, as well as optional evidence and standards fields. Kyle Bowen from ClassHack created this, which I think is a great way of really thinking about the bones behind the badge, that it's the metadata that makes these badges truly information rich and differentiates them from many of the badges that we've seen to date. Badges are visual representations of skills and literacies, as I mentioned. They are different also from many of the scouting badges that we may have earned early in life um, in that they are truly intended to be learner driven um, with the idea that proficiencies and competencies have sort of a means of self-expression. I mentioned on, on the previous panel that if you ask these boys to talk about their badges, they'd much uh, more, be more likely to talk about learning to build their own mountain bike and working with incredible students from Brown University or Engineers Without Borders. Um, we had two students who wanted to learn how to create their own cupcake business in an entrepreneurial program. Yes, they got a badge, but they also learned how to build a business plan and pitch it for seed funding in front of entrepreneurs. So we've got, in Providence, lots of after-school programs that have badges that have assessments to them. We've made some connections to things like the Common Core, but because these are real unique experiences happening outside of school, they get some of the best assessment. Um, did you get seed funding for your cupcake business? More importantly, did the cupcakes taste good? Authentic questions. Uh, in the middle school, we know uh, through a three-year longitudinal study, it takes 30 days of attendance before we see an uptick in student outcomes like better attendance in school or even math scores. Our first badges in middle school, therefore, take 30 days to earn. So we know what you're all wondering. How do I get started issuing badges? Many of the folks in this room and many of the DML grantees were once where you sat, really at a place where they were eager to learn about how to get started. Looking at your existing goals and content is a fantastic place to start. Pulling together a team, not only internally within 
within your group, um, but also really thinking about involving the needs of the community members that you serve and, and really creating a co-design process. We couldn't be ex more excited to talk to you about this after. Please come find us. Um, you can find us on the web as well. Badge Earners Unite.